Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming at you again for another Film Fanatic show. It is about uh, 10 o'clock on a Friday. Getting close to the beginning of school. School technically has started, I guess, in high, for high school and middle school. Well, the teachers are back, at least. They, they were back this week. I go back to school, I think, next week, like Wednesday or Thursday. So it's hard to believe the summer season is almost over. It's kind of, it's a whirlwind uh, of goodness, but it just goes by so darn fast. Usually, it's always funny because winters have been pretty mellow, but it's always uh, something when you think of the time frame, or at least for me, when you think of like November till about, you know, February or March, it feels like eternity uh, as far as the winter season and the cold climate. It just seems like it goes on forever. But here in the summer, it's like, it's beautiful. The summer, this summer was really beautiful. We still got some more time and I hope it stays this way for a while, but it's definitely cooling off at night, starting to see the leaves change color. And also, you know, um, but it feels like from May, late May, May to about late August, uh, it just goes by like literally at a blink of an eye. But you get it while you can get it. It's my favorite season. Uh, you know, it's, it's try to enjoy it as much as I can. So try to be outside as much as I can. One of the cool things, too, about uh, the work that I do, I, I you know, I play uh, in various bands and things like that. A lot of our gigs and things, uh, most of them, pretty much all of them, uh, are outside, so that's one thing I really love about the summer season. A lot of musicians I know hate playing outside, but I actually really enjoy it a lot. And it's, uh, you know, it's a, a, another way to be out in the elements. So I spend a lot of time, I spent probably more time outside this year than I did before in past years. Because where I work, too, I work at the Montessori School. I help run the summer camps there, so we spend the whole day outside there, too. So get to really enjoy the weather. But anyway, today's video is on, um, well, this is going to be a very different thing. I've never done a, really a review on, or I've never done more than one review um, essentially on a movie that I've done, you know, coverage of a movie that I've done before, especially around a movie that I've had a lot of negative things around, uh, and also a movie that I saw in the theater. And I, so this, I did a review on Alien Romulus, about, I saw it about a week ago. I went up with my good friend Mike. We went to the IMAX Theater in Saco, Maine, which is uh, an amazing, an amazing facility. The actual event and going there was super fun. Uh, you know, my friend Mike is a real big movie fan like I am. We're both, both pretty big nerds. We have a lot of the same interests and tastes. We we're both really into science fiction and horror. So the experience was great. I had only been to an IMAX theater once before, and Mike had never been to an IMAX theater. So f from that standpoint, it was really, really great. And But I came away from the actual movie a lot of mixed feelings about it. And... It's been a week since I've seen it, and I did a show, again, like I said, about a week ago where I talked about Romulus. It was, I believe I did the video the day after I saw it, and I saw it on a Thursday night. We got home really late, but the next day, the next morning, I got up and I did a, a show on it. A lot of the times, you know, it's good to process a movie and to kind of think about it and and usually there are those situations where you see a movie at first and you automatically are you know just sucked in sucked into it and you you're, you're loving it you're loving life you're loving the film you're loving the experience and then you might have that weird experience too where that happens but then it kind of wanes and it and it you it things become kind of forgettable. Sometimes you just love the movie right away and you fall in love with the with the entire experience and it stays with you. Or it's that situation where 
you want to keep talking about it. You want to, you keep thinking about the movie and it really, you know, kind of unpacks <laughs> a lot of different emotions or feelings about that particular film. Uh, some films are obviously they have, uh, you know, lots of layers to them. So they're, you know, you're unpacking a lot of different things. And a lot of times movies like that require, you know, I, I love movies where you can <clears throat> always go back to them, especially if it's a movie you love and you can get something new out of it or it will still always have that impact, you know. And most 99% of the movies that I talk about on this channel are movies that I feel are pretty in step with that kind of experience. And then you might have an experience where you see a movie and you just, everything falls flat for you and you just, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to get through and you just know that the experience isn't, isn't good. You know, and so I always feel like when you do, well, when it comes to this, when you, when it comes to making uh, videos about a particular film I always feel it's good to like have the film experience whether it's at a theater or, or at home and you know check out the movie and see how it you know how it settles how it how it sits with you in a couple of days but I I generally for the most part I feel like your your first reaction to movies uh, and to anything really a you know, a book you read or a band you hear for the first time, uh, a painting that you see for the first time, all of those things are, you know, usually you have that kind of gut reaction to something. And usually for the most part, I'd say 95% of the time, or at least in my experience, that, uh, that opinion or that feeling that that movie or that experience gives you is the, the true like telltale sign of how you feel about it. You know, again, you always have exceptions. And since I did, I've done, I did this review on Alien Romulus. I, I don't know. I've, I've increased. I've had even more of a negative feeling about this movie. And it was, it was weird because when I saw it, and I've talked about, like, again, you should check out the first review. But I, and I this is the first time I've done a second show on on the same movie and this is like I don't usually when I when I do reviews I don't usually go into like the spoiler spoiler thing I don't like to give things away uh but I I try to talk about movies generally but I guess if you want to call it this is a little bit more of a detailed kind of spoiler review but you know it is what it is I'm, I'm just going to talk about the movie again now that I've had some more time to process it I've looked at a lot of other um YouTube folks out there who have reviewed this movie and I've talked about it with friends. I've talked about it with people and you know, it's a funny thing because yeah, at face value, at, you know, and, and, and for what it is at the end of the day, it's a movie's just a movie, but you know, and I understand a lot of people have that opinion because you can just, you know, put in another movie and have a different experience or just forget about it and move on. And, of course, that's what it is. But for me as a viewer and a fan, a film fanatic, if you will, I I like to have those experiences where it's it's long-lasting. It's something, for me, films are so, so uh, important and they're so inspiring. You know, and for my band Quantum, for instance, that that band is obviously well it's my baby i've had it for a very long time i've had it for like almost 10 years and that movie is really or it's i should say that band quantum is is you know greatly inspired by by films and so it's a for me it's it's unique because it's i don't know it's not a traditional thing it's not like a traditional band I guess if you will whereas most bands and artists out there are you know they'll say oh we're inspired by this by this artist or by these bands these are our, our influences 
and for me, I have those musical ins- inspirations, obviously. But for me, it's like it's film is the the main thing, you know, and that involves everything that it entails with with film, you know, the cinematography, uh, the pacing of a film. I I write a lot of tunes. Most of the tunes that I write in my band Quantum are very influenced by just say the uh, the kind of the pacing of a film, the the delivery. I I love a lot of films that have uh, a very slow start. I like the slow burn kind of thing. Uh, even though I do love you know the real kind of brutal films that go you know particularly slasher you know, particularly around slasher films that go for the jugular right away, but I typically like the slow burn films. But like pacing and the work behind characterization, fleshing out characters, all of those things, like the small little details, but at a slow pace to where you, hopefully as a viewer, you know, you get pulled into it. So just that alone, along with many other facets, I'm really influenced by as far as how I approach a tune or write a song or how I layer a tune. And everything else, obviously, the cinematography, the theatrical aspects of film, the, the direction, the tone, the music, the, the aesthetics, all of those things greatly, great, greatly influence my band Quantum more than anything else. So, and, you know, I, there's, there's a lot of films and directors that out, even outside of the musical context, uh, with my band Quantum, I find to be really inspiring, you know, just uh, kind of like personal heroes, if you will. You know, I look at guys like Stanley Kubrick or, you know, Herschel Gordon Lewis, uh, kind of just being personal heroes for me. You know, it, 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 it gives me fuel every time. It's a well I love to go back to, and I'm, I, and I'm inspired by that. So for, for me, film is... And I feel like film is the the hardest art form, <clears throat> the most complex art form that there is. And I feel it's it's the ultimate way of kind of transporting yourself from the mundane, you know, having that experience and and going into this like subjective reality. I just feel like you know, whatever the genre is, whatever the budget for that film is, I feel like it's it's the ultimate form of escapism from the viewer's standpoint and the fans you know from being a fan you know from that from that perspective so for me films are really really you know on one hand it's pure entertainment but on one hand it it really strikes a chord for me uh on a very deep level and uh you know in a very personal level so i you know i can't help but be uh, that I can't help but be uh, very uh, entwined with films as far as my kind of my fiber uh, of of who I am just it's just uh, you know for me it's like water or, or taking a shower at night or eating food it's like kind of essential so I do look at film and feel feel differently about films and the craft and the art form of, of movie making a lot differently than probably say your average person who just you know goes to the movies casually or watches occasionally their favorite show on television or you know uh, it's, you know likes to stream everything so after I did that review of Romulus about a week ago I you know obviously I've been thinking about it <clears throat> and I found myself having more and more problems around it uh, more, more so around the way, basically, the entire franchise of the alien, of the alien universe was kind of thrown into this one movie. And again, when I first saw this movie, I, you know, Fetty Alvarez is a, I think he's a, a terrific director. I really love Evil Dead. I think that's a tremendous movie. I think it's really original. Uh, I love. Don't Breathe. I think both of those movies are just tremendous. And again, Fetty Alvarez only, he literally has 
Uh, there is a third movie where I believe he did a movie that is tied in with the girl with the dragon tattoo, which I have not seen. I believe he di he directed that movie. <clears throat> I have I have not seen that movie, and I did hear from a couple of people, and it's an American version. I did hear that <clears throat> that movie is uh, is awful, and I've never seen it. I've just heard it's awful. But Fetty Alvarez apparently directed that movie. But Evil Dead, Don't Breathe, he's most well known for probably Evil Dead was. That was a huge success. That's what got me, you know. Uh, I did not really care for that film when I first saw it. But then I saw it a couple times. And I was like, wow, like this movie is pretty incredible. It's kind of its own thing. It's a standalone movie. And then, and then last year I bought it really cheap on Blu-ray. And I now I, I just think it's kind of a masterpiece. And even in the face of being, you know, a remake... But it is kind of its own thing, though. It's a reimagining of the story from the, you know, obviously the genius uh, mind, genius mind of Sam Raimi. And it's its own thing. And <clears throat> Don't Breathe is, a, uh, I think, an awesome movie. And granted, so he's only done, as a director, he's only done two films. So, but he, you know, directed Alien Romulus. So I was, for me, going to see this movie, my anticipation this was the most anticipated movie that i uh was looking forward to this summer this summer 20 of 2024 by far <coughs> and i had been waiting to see it for <coughs> for probably probably about a year to a year to seven months when i first heard that this was coming out and that fetty alvarez was in charge so i was really anticipating and i loved the the trailers that they put out but when I saw this film, again, I really thought the start of this film was just fabulous. I, it, the timeline of the film of Alien Romulus is it takes place between Alien and Aliens. That's all I knew about this film. There was, there was one thing of where... I got a little bit of a bad feeling about going into the film. Not necessarily a bad feeling, but a feeling of, of caution. I I caught wind of a third trailer. I only, I there was a um, a bigger, longer trailer that had come out right before the release of the film, and I was I was reluctant to watch it because I was like, I hate trailers that come. I I pretty much hate all trailers that come out these days because they do. Uh, essentially give away the entire film uh they're they're just terrible and i don't understand the logic uh behind these the, with the method of thinking that these studios uh, have when they do that because the there's they're you know you're you're literally going into the theater knowing what's going to happen it's just it's so there's no you know i, I think a good trailer should leave you with a little, a few more questions and, and be really intriguing, you know, and, and where you want to see it and you got to see it because it gives you more questions. Most trailers now will be too long in general, but they will literally show you plot points, um, you know, full action sequences if they are action movies, uh, arcs in the character, the beginning, middle, and end. And it's literally like this general synopsis of it's like when you watch your favorite tv show and a lot of the times with certain episodes or seasons you can if you need a refreshment you can watch like a recap of that season and it will literally catch you up um uh, to where you need to be and i feel like every trailer is kind of like a recap now that comes out so i i did watch the third trailer uh, and I was a little bit turned off by the trailer for Romulus, only because it really gave away at least the the setup for the movie. And I was like, oh, that's like... My first reaction was like, this looks really great, it looks fantastic. But to me, it's, down, it's, sounding, it's starting to sound just like the, uh, the plot behind his... Freddy Alvarez's last movie, Don't Breathe, where it's essentially about these group, this group of of kids, these young twenty-something kids that are really in a you know 
emotionally and financially and their environment, wherever they, you know, where they're living, they're in a really, really bad place. And they're really, really desperate to change their situation. And that includes, you know, basically robbing, um, you know, having a term, having this plan or this scheme to, to uh, steal, all, um, steal the prize, steal lots of money and to kind of better their situation. And they're basically criminals. And, and when I first saw the trailer for the, for the, the, the final trailer, I was like, wow, like this story seems like it's not going to be original at all. It's going to be don't breathe, but in space. And I was like, oh, but I was still incredibly excited and really, you know, really, really anticipating this movie. But I was a little bit, the air came the air was let out of my balloon a little bit by that by that situation. So, but <clears throat> I went to the movie. We saw it. We went to the movies and we saw it. I was really, really into it. And then it got to this point where they brought back a, an old character, Ash. And the aesthetics, the design of this film looked just incredible. I was really into it. I thought the... the introduction to a lot of these characters was very interesting and I was I was along for the ride but I when when it was plot when the plot was revealed and they went into what they were going to be doing I felt like it was very once they kind of once things started to get going because <clears throat> it has a little bit of a slow start but once things get going you know 35 minutes or a half hour into the movie I just felt like, wow, this is a, this is good. This is exciting. But then I felt like this is so predictable. So it was weird. And then one thing's once things got going and it kind of took on and went more into a horror direction. Um, I was still into it. But then there was this there's a aspect in the movie where they bring back Ian Holmes' character. Although they are saying it's not Ash. They've changed the name, and Ian Holmes' character was the, the the android in the first Alien. And basically, they bring back his character, and it's pure like AI CGI. Uh, the the tech the, that was that's the technology that they used, and everything up until that point was really great because it was all. Um, Freddie Alvarez did a great job with like kind of replicating the feel, but putting you back in that universe, but giving you a little bit of a different thing. The the plot was, you know, I felt it could have been a little bit more interesting, and 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 and, and I wish it was more original, and it wasn't the the same thing as Don't Breathe. <clears throat> um, but the the world building was great. The use of of puppets, uh, you know, the practical effects were great. But when they brought back this character Ash, who was this android that was in the first alien i just thought right away it was like this big red light going off and i was like suddenly the car the car was you know driving down the street and suddenly i slammed on the brakes and i was because i had to avoid going you know crashing into a school bus or something and once i saw this character come be, be brought back i was like totally disoriented i felt like on one hand it was like uh the the effects you know, considering that they built this really cool world, and I was totally into it. It was beautiful. It was it was creepy. It was dark, and then they used this really awful CGI. It just automatically, I was just like, "What the fuck?" And it took me out of the movie right away. And I remember turning to Mike, and it was so glaringly obvious that, that it was like really bad CGI. I was just, I was kind of dumbfounded. <clears throat> because it totally changed the tone of what the film was going for. It, it, it was like this huge hiccup or hitting this huge bump in the road. And suddenly you're like, you're, you know, you're smooth sailing one minute and next you, you almost crash into a ditch. That's what it felt like. And it totally throw, threw me off. Um, and I thought, you know, the characters in the movie were... I have to say at this point, I feel like all of the characters in the movie, initially I thought, okay, 
they're cool. Like I'm, I'm digging it. I'm, I'm, I'm along for the ride. They're giving enough inf information with all these characters. They're f pretty fleshed out. Now I find myself forgetting everybody I that I saw in the cast, with the exception of the first of the lead, Rain. She's pretty good, and the android character, the new android character they, that they bring into the story. <clears throat> but everyone else, I just feel like they're kind of annoying and you like want to see them die. And, and for the most part, they are uh, completely forgettable. I don't know any of the names. I can't remember any of the names of any of the characters. And since it's been almost two weeks now since I've seen it, I feel myself distancing from remembering anything around those characters. And, and from there, again, the action is pretty good. It does have a relatively good level of suspense. But I felt like I never got lost in the suspense as to, like, you know, the, the setup that they were trying to go for, that Fede Alvarez was trying to go for, where, you know, they want to they wanna put you in this, like, kind of nail-biting nail scenario where you're going to be grip, gripping the chairs as hard as you can and... There's going to be a certain level of suspense and intensity. And I felt like that's what they're going for, but I felt like I never really got into that place. You know, again, <clears throat> like the, the two masterpiece films, Alien and Aliens, where those films are, not only are they obviously master, you know, master classes in filmmaking and two of the greatest sci-fi horror movies ever made, but the level of suspense in that movie, uh, those movies, is just incredible. And I think what they were trying to go for was kind of bring you into the aliens thing of where, you know, it's a horror film, but then they were bringing in this action element to try to tie it in even more so with Aliens, direct, directed by James Cameron. But I felt like that, and the suspense that those first two movies has, um, is just, you know, it's on 11 the whole way through. Like, you're you're you are strapped in and you are totally immersed in that. And it's a high level of intensity the whole way through. <clears throat> I never really got lost in, the, in Alien Romulus to that degree. It was like, I felt like I needed to be there, but I, it just never had that level of intensity. And I think it was due, it was due to the ash bringing back a dead actor, which again, I think was really weird and kind of strange and kind of creepy because I feel like I'm I'm not looking forward to the future of, of filmmaking because I feel like it's going to be a thing of now they'll start bringing back you know you'll see a movie maybe where they'll bring back Cary Grant as a, a deep fake or a CGI character or Humphrey Bogart I mean there where it's just like kind of void of any human quality and it's just kind of this dystopian um further evidence of this dystopia that we're living in and it's just like oh my god where's the humanity you know and it's just kind of gross and i just felt that way when i saw ash's character and and i never got lost in the suspense of the film i never really got invested in it and i think it was a lot to do with just well the characters are okay i like the lead i like the newer android character I like their relationship, but then I thought everyone else was kind of just there, or they were just kind of annoying. I really wanted them to all die, um, and I just felt like it was so straightforward. The story was so straightforward, and again, you can say, and obviously it is, the, the level, the storyline for Alien and Aliens, like the actual story, is pretty straightforward. But it's done so well, and I feel the characterization is, is so fleshed out that, <clears throat> and the buildup is so suspenseful. Uh, and it's truly, you know, it, the, both of those films, even though even say, for example, Aliens is, is a full throttle action movie, the level of suspense is through the roof. And it just is able to kind of pull you in you know, and you're strapped in, no matter what. And it's just so well-crafted, you know, untouchable. 
And I feel like Freddy Alvarez, it felt like he was just kind of re, re, trying to rehash that. And you, he needed to do something a little bit different in order to achieve that because it was already done before, you know, just that alone. So, you know, when you think about it, those movies are almost 50 years old, you know, so it's crazy. And it's crazy that this franchise is still going strong. And then we, as the movie progressed, it started introducing, it started actually replicating, which, and again, when my first, when I came out of the theater and throughout the movie, I was, I was, I was confused. I, I had a feeling of like, initially I'm, I'm into it. I, I was like, this is, this is, this is great. I'm digging this. And then it came to a point of where I was totally taken out of the movie because of the CGI, the really bad CGI that was introduced by bringing back a dead actor, Ian Holm, Ian Holmes. That that just totally took me out of the movie. But then there were all of these references, and they weren't even subtle. They started referencing all and every movie in the Intel, in the uh, Alien franchise where they're, they started taking, they used direct scenes and direct quotes from the dialogue of each Alien movie, which included uh, every movie. Well, Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, Alien uh, Resurrection, and uh, Prometheus, and Covenant. And I just, and it wasn't even in a subtle way <clears throat> they were using direct quotes and direct dialogue from each of those movies like suddenly that was the thing that was happening in the movie and they were also taking not only dialogue from the scenes but actual like scenes from each movie and characters they were basically putting them they put they made this decision to put those in one movie and I, it was so disorienting to me. I didn't know what to think when I, when that was happening. And it, I was just like, I had so many kind of like what the fuck moments where I was like, why are they doing this? And on one hand, I was like, okay, I can get what Fetty Alvarez is doing. He's trying to tie all of these movies together. And he's trying to like maybe fix some of the problems. Because after Aliens... <clears throat> um, really, realistically, all of the other movies, with the exception of Alien 3, again, I've said a lot of times that Alien 3 is, you know, it's a, it's a watchable movie. It's an interesting movie to see because it's the first movie of David Fincher, who's one of my favorite directors. He had no creative control. It was his first movie. And... You know, so it's interesting to watch it because you see his, his, you know, you can see his style in that film. But the movie itself is a pile of shit, really. It's terrible. Elliot Goldenthal does, an the, he, who was the composer for the, for the score, is absolutely amazing. It's the greatest, I think it's the greatest horror film score ever made, personally. And there's some great, really great, um, you know, scenes in the film as far as like the cinematography or the way it's directed. But the movie itself is like kind of terrible. Um, <clears throat> so real realistically, every movie after Aliens is, you know, a pile of shit, like unwatchable. So I was thinking, okay, maybe Fred Alvarez is like trying to like take these ideas <clears throat> And put them together in this thread and making it more cohesive. And I thought, okay, I can get along. I can get on that. I can get on that train of thinking. I can, I can agree with that. And when I looked at it that way, <clears throat> and this is all while I'm watching the movie. And then on one hand, I, I, while that's happening, I, can, I was like, okay, I can understand that. It, and he's doing a pretty good job of tying all those things together. But then the other part of me was just like, why the fuck is this happening? Why the fuck is he doing this? Why is he, why are, and then I, st and then I started feeling, no, I feel like 
No, Fede Alvarez's vision was compromised here. I feel like he wasn't in control of this movie. I feel like, no, he was getting probably a lot of pressure from Ridley Scott and another executive. Ridley Scott produced this movie. He was getting probably a lot of pressure <clears throat> from, you know, tons of people. Tons of people involved, the executives of the film, and especially Ridley Scott, <clears throat> to try to tie this whole thing together, this entire franchise. And I was like, why? But And I'm like, then I started thinking, well, is Fetty Alvarez like some kind of repairman for this franchise that is kind of a pile of shit with the exception of the first two movies and he's trying to come in and like fix everything? And I was like, why would they do that? Why would they do that? And... And... And why would they take ideas from these other movies that failed, failed in the first place? Why would they take these ideas that already failed and try to make them work? It didn't make any sense to me. And so it was very disorienting. I didn't know what to think after I sat there kind of stunned. And then the ending is... The other thing that was kind of shocking about this film was how much they tied in, especially the ending, how much they tied in the storyline of Prometheus, which I was like completely dumbfounded. I was along for the ride, sort of, but I was dumbfounded. I was shocked. I was like, what just happened? And I remember just walking out of the theater kind of in this daze. Like, I just didn't know what just happened it was so disorienting and then I was like I felt depressed after I saw the movie and like the ideas of the idea of trying to like execute these all, all already bad ideas but trying to execute them in this you know in a, in a quote unquote like cohesive way and try to reintroduce these ideas that already failed in the first place from these various films and I just, I just couldn't believe it. I was just, I couldn't believe it. It was very disorienting. And the film score too, like one of the things that I love about the Alien films, especially the first two, is the film, the soundtracks are really great. The film scores are really great. I mean, I am so influenced by the first two Alien movies, like getting back to Quantum. The first, I, we have a tune that's called the Nostromo, which is the ship in the first Alien. And it's referenced in the, Alien Romulus, like 10,000 other things. Um, I have a song called the Nostromo that I wrote, and it's completely influenced by Alien and Aliens, more so Aliens. So it's a big part of my life in my weird little musical world and in my personal world. But... <clears throat> The one thing, too, that was so... So I really look forward to the musical scores for these films. And the thing that was so disorienting, again, about the film score for this movie is there's there's so much music. I feel I feel like there's an overabundance of, like, cues uh, and themes. And I realized what was going on when the music was going on along with these scenes. The music is really busy. It's kind of, like, constant. <clears throat> They're actually, like, throughout the entire movie along with like taking dialogue from each of these films and then also taking actual scenes from the from these various films they actually they they also take the um the themes the the music cues and the themes of each of these films and th also throw them in to the film so it's like i felt at the end of it it's the, it's so disorienting and it's kind of exhausting. And when it got to the scene of where they were going into reintroducing the whole Prometheus thing, and they had, which is just such a terrible movie. I mean, people keep, I, I, I get sick and tired of people trying to say, oh, it's like, it's, it's actually a really good movie, and you need to, like, give it a second chance. And it's like, yeah, on one hand, you could say, Ridley Scott took a chance and tried to re reintroduce new ideas. But the movie, come on, people. Like, come on. The movie is so illogical and 
and so poorly executed. Uh, it's it's just and it has nothing to do. It's a train wreck of a movie, and I'm just like, come on, people, stop trying to like paint this bad movie, you know, into this thing of well, it's actually good. It, you know, people need to give it a chance. Come on, it's just people are just so full of shit. I'm sorry, and I just like, come on, just call a spade a spade for Christ's sakes. You know, Ridley Scott has not made a good movie. I don't think since Gladiator, and that was like 40 years ago. And it's like, stop. Yeah, Ridley Scott. Ridley Scott, you know, was at one time a really great director. I mean, The Duelist, Blade Runner, Alien. I mean, he's made some incredible films. But that was, th those films were, were fucking decades ago. Stop putting him on this pedestal that he's some, like, God and that he's still this visionary director. His days have been, have been over as a director for many years. But yet, he still has this clout. He has all of this money. And, you know, time will tell because I don't think many people are going to remember a lot of his films compared to his other films and in his legacy, and time will show that. But anyway, I just, I was, I was really, when they got to the scene of Prometheus and they, and they played, the theme was actually used in, of Prometheus in the movie, I was just like, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. <clears throat> and so, since it's been a week since I've seen this movie, I've gone through a whole kinds of things, of a, a whole gamut of emotions. On one part, I've been really, I was, I went from like being baffled and so disoriented to being kind of sad and depressed about the film and the film experience. And then I, and then after that, I went into the space of where I have just felt really angry about it and really let down and just like thinking, wow, they think people are just idiots that go to the movies. And I was like, well, and then at one point I was like, earlier on in the week, I was like, no, I should, I should just give it a chance. I should go see it again. And you know, I need to see this movie again to, 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 you know, rethink my, you know, to see, to see if it hits me differently. <clears throat> and I thought that for about a day or 24 hours. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to waste my time. I, I love movies to death. I watch movies all the time. There are so many there are so many other movies, so many more other experiences that I would rather have than to do this again. So I was like, no, at some point I'm sure I'll see it again, but fuck it. I'm not going to see it. So, yeah, this is, <clears throat> I guess, a more in-depth review of this movie. And I just, I can't get over people like raving about this movie the way that they they are they are raving and I, and it's like i i get it people need to all have their opinions but it's just kind of baffling to me i just don't i just i don't get it i don't get it and i get these i've seen these ads where they are promoting the studio is promoting this movie and there are all these people talking about that and this is mostly on Facebook where people will comment saying, oh, this is like the greatest movie of 2024 or, oh, this was such an incredible movie. And it's just like, and I start looking at these comments and I'm just like, really? Come on, people. Like, yeah, there are some aspects of this movie that are kind of interesting and cool. The first, again, like I said in the beginning, the first 20 minutes, first half hour of this, uh, of this movie is really good. Really good. Um... <clears throat> and it's not like this movie is like the worst movie ever made, but it's pretty bad. And but I'm I'm just uh, dumbfounded why people people are like at this point of where they're sucking this movie's dick so hard um, that they're not even being uh, critical. In any way, you can like something a lot and yet be critical of it. You can criticize something. You can 
<clears throat> you know, you can, it's possible to overanalyze something, but you got to also, you know, you, it, you can love something and, and still find some, maybe some points in the movie or in that piece of art that you personally think were not really well executed or that could have been better or certain ideas that could have been presented better or executed better. You know, that's, that's totally fine. That's why we have brains. And that can still, that doesn't necessarily diminish your experience around the film. And I'm just, I'm just dumbfounded that there are a lot of people that don't even, um, are kind of in denial of certain things that are blatantly obvious about this movie and that they're not criticizing the movie at all. And they're just like sucking its dick and I and raving about it. And I just don't understand it. When all of these things that I've talked about in this film are just so blatantly fucking obvious. It's not even done in a subtle way. I just don't get it. I just don't get it. It's kind of illogical to me. So, and I kind of feel like these ads that are being posted promoting this movie are really just they are it, it was probably all ai generated and all of these people are just fake they're not they're little robots but anyway i wanted to do the second show to kind of talk about this movie again and i probably will never talk about this film again um so yeah i know it's a long show it's about 40 it's almost 50 minutes but for what it's worth check it out if you uh feel like it and thanks again and the next few shows will be about new new movie reviews and things like that. I got a stack of some new really killer movies that I've just gotten and I've been watching. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace. <clears throat>